Okay, I'm about to film my first cooking video. This is going to be squirrels, and uh, I've asked for recipes, and uh, the first one I got from was from my nephew. He says this is a great recipe, so we're trying it out. The first step in this recipe is to uh, take two squirrels or more, if you have them, uh, and let them marinate for three days in uh, vinegar and salt. I'm not sure what the proportion is supposed to be, so I'm going to, I'm going to make it to taste. And then once I taste it, it seems to be about where I think it should be. I'm going to throw these guys in. And um, I've always liked uh, Zesty Italian, so I might put a little Zesty Italian in there also for flavor too. But the first thing it calls for is to go ahead and, uh, and get the squirrel soaking. I'm probably supposed to thaw these out first, but I want to make sure I make the three-day deadline. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, while it's still frozen, I'm going to go ahead and start the marinade. And what I'll do is, what I'll do is I'll quarter them, because they need to be quartered also. What I'll do is I'll quarter them after they have, uh, they've marinated. Okay, now I'm just going to mix some tap water. Uh, we try not to use uh, tap water around here for anything that we're going to be eating on because there's, uh, there were some problems uh, with some line breakages and they said that, that you really needed to uh, flush your water for a long period of time. Uh, we did that, but after that I still didn't trust it, so we tried to only use that for other purposes. I'm just going to, as I said, just add uh, amounts of this until I think that it's at a consistency that I like and uh, then we'll just go ahead and uh, put it up. So I'm going to put in a liberal amount of salt first. I'm going to shake this thing up when I do finally put it in there that everything is uh, pretty much well mixed and I taste it about where I want it. Okay, I think I got it about to taste now, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. I would suggest that you do do exactly what I just did when you're making this marinade. Is to go ahead and uh, now I made it, I have made it a little bit strong, so I'm going to pop it off with the rest of the water. Okay. Okay, I've topped it off right now. And uh, now, one of my favorite marinades in the whole world is Zeste Italian. I just think it's the greatest stuff in the world. It makes everything taste good if you marinate it. Chicken, whatever. Give it that zesty taste. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to it. Just for flavor. And uh, I think it's vinegar based anyway. Pop the top on it. shape all that mixed up and now we're gonna wait uh, three days and do the rest and that's my first video first this is my first time trying to cook and do a video so uh, if it looks a little disjointed just forgive that all right be back in three days okay uh, this has been aging now for three days I'm going to take it out and, uh, and quarter it now. So now we need to uh, go ahead and quarter this. And I have my, my quartering scissors that I use. These things here will cut through any bone that you ever need to cut through. So we're going to go ahead and quarter it. I'm going to do that off camera and come right back. I've saved this last part of the quartering just to show you how great these scissors are. Uh, they're made by cobalt and uh, these things here make bones cut bones like it's nothing. And uh, I don't care if you got rabbit, I don't care if you got squirrels, I don't care what it is, this thing here these cobalt uh, scissors do not play. They get it done.
for you. So, and there you are, ready for the next process. Okay, the next step in the process, because it's been marinated for three days, we got to rinse this thing. So, we're gonna put the pieces in here, and we're gonna rinse them in uh, in warm water uh, to get off the excess of the marinade. So that's the next step and then we'll be right back. These are all the seasonings you're going to need uh, to make this recipe. The only thing that's different is if you look on the right hand side you'll see Morton's natural seasoning. I substituted that for uh, Lowry's total seasoning. They're about the same thing though. So those are all that you're going to need and then you also need some flour and natural cornmeal, white cornmeal. Alright, next process. Okay, what I've done is I put in, I mixed all these together into a bowl here. And what I did was I went light on the salts because I already have uh, soaked this thing in, uh, in salt and vinegar, so it's already got a salt content. So I went a little bit, one uh, teaspoon full of, full of, uh, one teaspoon full of these two, and a half a teaspoon of the rest. Okay, now I'm gonna add one part cornmeal, one part cornmeal to three parts flour. It's going to be mixed together now. Okay, now this, this is mixed four to one. Next step is to put mustard on all of it. And uh, then we'll be able to add the rest of the seasoning. So let's get, let's get it smeared with mustard. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, now we're going to take our flour and our cornmeal mixture and add, put it in a, in a paper bag, cup it into a paper bag. And then we're going to insert into the paper, into the paper bag each piece of this just to shake it up. I'll do a few pieces at a time. I'll get another paper bag to lay it down on. Okay, now we're going to take our seasoning and we're going to sprinkle it over it. Uh, I'm going to use a sifter in this case. My fingers are not good at this. Okay, I got my sifter here. I'm going to pour a little bit of this into the sifter. And just let it fall from there. Okay. Having done that side, we're going to now flip it over. Do the other side. And now we're going to commence with the frying. Okay, uh, my nephew said it's better to use peanut oil, but I don't have any here, so we're using Crisco uh, canola oil. So for you, you might want to take a look at getting peanut oil for this recipe. But we've already loaded this, loaded the fryers to uh, the uh, the maximum amount, and now we're just gonna let it reach temperature, and we're gonna start uh, we're gonna start frying this stuff. This thing gets hot pretty fast. We finally got it to 350 degrees. We're gonna start cooking it now. Always start with your with your, with your thicker pieces. So I'm gonna put them in about four at a time. about the same but you'll find that it's going to cook much faster 
if you put in a few pieces at a time, if you load it up, it's gonna take a little, little, little longer to cook it. So, it's already smelling good. I can smell the mustard. <laughs> okay, we're ready to take the first ones out. They're golden brown, as you can see. And in a minute, be ready for the first taste test. God, that looks good. I've never had squirrel before in my life. And I don't know. Since I was 16, I probably killed a thousand of them. But never knew how to cook them, so I never cooked them. Let you guys take a look at one of these legs. Up close and personal. Don't that look good? I wish you could bite it. Okay, you guys, it's time for my first bite of squirrel. And I'm going to tell you the honest truth about this. Just because I cooked it and my nephew has the recipe, I'm going to tell you the truth about what I think it tastes like and how good. Man, I got to admit, I, David, I got to admit, man, it's good. And it's tender. It's got the same consistency of eating chicken, a piece of chicken. It's old. That, I'm telling you, the, the key to this right now, being on the flavoring and all that, the key to this is three days of soaking in vinegar and in salt. It, like you said, it breaks down the tendencies, the tendons, and it just makes it. Mm. And the taste, amazing. You guys, you gotta try this recipe. I am not lying. It is very good. I'm going to finish this piece. I'm back again because I'm staying off camera for this. But um, I'm going to tell you. All these years, I have not been eating squirrel. I messed up. Squirrel. Squirrel is good. Hmm. If you guys have other recipes out there, that are kind of basic, let me know. We'll cook it up and try it for you, but right now this is number one. If anything else beats it out, I'll let you know. You guys, let me just say this, okay? If you just handed me this piece of meat here and said, Aaron, eat this with a blindfold on, but I couldn't see how small it was. It is like eating the best southern fried chicken ever made. That is no joke. This stuff is damn. Well, the squirrel's in danger now. <laughs> okay, we're back again. I just finished off my first piece of squirrel, as you can see. And uh, I know you're tired of me saying this, but this stuff is actually great. I'm just gonna. I better get a guy once from. Uh, from Kentucky and I asked him what was his favorite wild game dish. And he said squirrel stew. He said if, if I had his mother's squirrel stew, I would never want for anything else. Never got a chance to taste it, but if it was better than this, he was right. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We, we, we were eating this as fast as it was coming out, so we got a few pieces left. I wanted to get a close-up of it to show you and to tell you that if you try this recipe and you do exactly what you just saw me do, and you hate wild game and have always hated it. If you do this recipe and you taste it and you still hate it, I want you to write me and tell me why. With that, we're going to close. We're going to be doing more videos on cooking this winter. Uh, this is my uh, nephew's David's recipe, and I'm telling you, it's an excellent one. I want to see if there's someone out there can beat it. So send in your recipes and I'll try them. And I'm still looking for pigeon. I got a bunch of pigeons here. I don't have one pigeon recipe yet, I don't think. So send me some pigeon recipes. I'd like to do that next. Till next time, keep it safe.